The 1620s Rose Garden Roses were grown in a 1620s garden not only for their colour and scent, but because they could be processed to make rose water, rose oil and potpourri, which in turn was used for perfumes, medicine, cooking and to keep rooms smelling fresh. The important difference between modern hybrid roses grown today and the roses available in the 1620s is that they produced only one flush of colour and scent in a year, which usually came in late May and early June. The four rectangular beds each contain a different rose, representing two out of the three species of rose grown at that time. The pure red rose is Rosa gallica officinalis, also known as the Red Rose of Lancaster, as it was associated with that noble family. And it was valued not only for its perfume, but for its medicinal qualities. The other member of that family is Rosa Mundi, another Gallica rose, this time pink and white striped, which appeared as a sport from its red cousin in around 1580, although it has been wrongly attributed to Rosamund Clifford, mistress of King Henry II, who died in the 12th century. Incidentally, the Gallica rose takes quite readily from cuttings. The first of the two white roses is Rosa alba semiplana, the semi-doubled white rose which was associated with the House of York in what Sir Walter Scott called the Wars of the Roses in the early 19th century. Alba roses grow much taller than the Gallicas. They flower on the last year's growth and are subject to attacks of rust. The second white rose is Rosa alba maxima, which is a double rose and a development from the semi-planar and just as sweetly scented. It too had political associations, but this time later, in the 17th century, with the House of Stuart as it fought to regain control of the English and Scottish thrones. The alba roses seem to be more challenging than the Gallicas to strike from cuttings. The third major species of rose in the period is the damask rose, which is intensely perfumed. We found one poor specimen in an overgrown part of the garden, and we've been able to strike cuttings which will be used to develop a new rose area in a separate part of the garden. The importance of the rose was reflected in the number of times Shakespeare used it to enrich the imagery of his work. It is the focus of his passionate love sonnet number 54, and he made key references to red and white roses in his history plays while their associations with love and beauty are threaded throughout his work. King Henry VII combined a five-petaled white rose with a similar red rose to produce the emblem of the Tudor house. As the old roses only contribute to the pleasure of the garden for about one month each year, other planting has been developed. Spring interest is provided by primroses, cowslips and forget-me-nots, which thrive in the semi-shaded areas, as well as by the pasque flower, an enemy pulsatilla, named after the French word for Easter. It is arguably the prettiest of all wild flowers to migrate to gardens, and although rare in the wild now, was common but appreciated in the Tudor and early Stuart periods. The second spring flower of particular note is the snake's head fritillary, Fritillaria meligris, which has been strongly featured in recent gardening programmes. It was called snake's head because people thought that there was a, something viperish about the colour and shape of the unopened flower. A debate continues as to whether this plant was an introduction from France in the 1570s, which is most likely, or a native plant that had previously been overlooked. Once the roses are finished, the lavender, which flowers profusely and attracts bees and hoverflies, becomes a strong feature. Rather like roses, lavender had many uses beyond just looking and smelling attractive. We also grow clematis here, which was introduced from Spain in the late 16th century. We don't grow the large flowered species developed in the 19th century, but the viticella varieties with strong growth and abundant purple flowers, and also clematis flammula, which is less vigorous but has scented creamy white flowers.